All right, welcome back to Virtual School Assembly. Today, our guest is Adam Schnug. Adam is the principal of Catasauqua High School in Eastern Pennsylvania. He's been an educator for 12 years, starting in middle school as a social studies teacher. He's been an instructional facilitator at two different alternative schools and has served as an assistant principal in the middle and high school levels. In February of last year, he completed the executive development program for principals through the National Institute of School Leadership. Right now, he's working on his doctorate in educational leadership through Del Delaware Valley University. We're grateful to have you on the show, Adam. Welcome. Thank you so much, Tyler. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, to everybody that's watching, I want to say good morning or good afternoon, whatever time you guys are watching this. Uh, today, I just want to talk to everybody a little bit about uh, reflection. In particular, I want to talk to you about self-reflection because that's pretty much everybody's favorite topic when you deep down think about it. That is, you're thinking about you, the person. And I want to talk to you about how self-reflection, in particular with my journey, has helped me become more confident to tackle challenges as I've moved forward with my career, as well as with my life. So I'm going to start by going into a little bit about uh, personal journey and how reflection has helped me. I, I never really reflected much uh, until I got to college. And when I got to college, it was a little bit of a life-altering experience. You know, you're living on your own, you're studying on your own. And I kept asking myself, why does it seem like I'm not being as successful in college as I was in high school? And that was the first time I actually started to reflect. I was about 19 years old, and I actually sat down and asked myself, why isn't this going as easy as high school went? And the journey started right at that age. And since then, the way I reflected has changed probably 30, 40, 50 times. Uh, but it has always been very personal to me, how I reflect and how I move forward and how I become confident as a result of this. Uh, so, you know, you're going to college for the first time and uh, you're reflecting on why you're not doing as well as you were in high school. And I found out some things. I found out I wasn't taking advantage of opportunities that I took advantage of in high school, such as getting involved in lots of things. And I really wasn't studying in college. I thought it would come easy like it did in high school. So reflection for me meant I got to get my, myself in gear and I got to get moving and got to get studying a little bit. So I had to learn how to do that and reflect on that throughout the process. An interesting note about college for me, I didn't know anybody. I, I didn't go to a college where I had a single friend from high school. I, didn't, I went to a college in which I don't think a kid from my small town uh, had been there in several years. So the time comes, college is over, and I just got a job in North Carolina where I literally know nobody. I don't have any friends down there. Uh, I knew nobody. And uh, I told myself upon reflection, I remember recalling, wait a minute, I've been through this before, and it turned out fantastic. So I moved to North Carolina without knowing a person in the area and ended up meeting my wife, started my family. And then when, when now that we moved to eastern Pennsylvania, everything's just fine. And I'm able to tackle it with confidence because I reflected and known I've been in these situations before. And that's the short, uh, short end of my personal journey. Later on, I'll talk to you about some guidelines I created for this, but I want to really talk to students who are watching this right now. And I want you guys to do a little bit of an exercise with me because COVID-19 has absolutely changed our everyday lives. So if you're a student watching this, I just want you to sit back and think for a couple minutes. Think about how much your daily life has changed since the schools changed. That is, so whenever your school, no matter what state you're in, when you guys went to lockdown and everybody started staying inside, how much has your daily life changed? Think about how have you been communicating with your friends? And think about how much your educational experience has changed. And as you're taking a couple moments and thinking about this, this is when we go into something that I call recognition, that is recognition of what I have been through as a person. I want you to think about what you've been through as a student. I guarantee you, your life got flipped, turned upside down. It, it, it really did. Everybody's did during this COVID-19 and coronavirus. Your daily life looks different now than what it looked like probably in March. And the way you learn and the way instruction has been delivered to you has changed drastically from what you were used to probably in February. And I want you to think about that current experience. And here's why it's going to help you. Because nobody really knows what the fall is going to look like when we open up school. Nobody knows what the day-to-day -day is going to look like in school. Sure, there's some guidelines out there and recommendations. But it's a little scary because school in the fall is most likely not going to look like what it looked like in February. 
And when that time comes and you start feeling overwhelmed going, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know if I'm going to be able to continue doing virtual. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do one day in school, one day virtual, whatever the plan is. You should be confident because when you reflect on, you've been through this experience already. You've already been through a life-changing experience of coronavirus. You're going to be fine. And you just got to remember, and when you reflect, think, what made this successful? And what could I do better the next time this comes around? That's how reflection works, and that's how you gain confidence in this. If there's any teachers watching this, I'd love for you to do the same thing right now. Just sit back and think what your career was like prior to February, and then March, COVID comes on. Everything changed. And reflect for a moment on how much it has changed your daily life. And again, in the fall, we don't know what it's going to look like, but you're going to be fine as teachers because you've been through this before. I like to reflect on right now what's happening is probably the best professional development that has happened to American teachers in a long time is happening right now because we're learning how to use technology. We're learning how to use it well. We're learning how to engage students outside of the classroom and keep everybody motivated. And when the fall comes and challenges will come, there's no doubt about it, be confident that you're going to be okay because you are going to be okay because you've been through this situation before. And we just need to re be able to recall these things. And as far as reflection goes, I just got some guidelines that I personally developed throughout my, you know, uh, since I was 19 and now I'm in my mid 30s. So almost 20 years of doing this, I've developed two rules. The first rule is I never compare myself to anybody when I do my self reflection. I am thinking about me. And uh, the second rule that I developed is I try to keep my emotions out of my reflections. And believe me when I say this, if you're a young teenager, that is a lot easier said than done. It is something you have to work on and develop it. And because reflection is a practice, it's something you're going to have to do over and over again. And the way it works when you're 13, 14, or 15 is probably not going to be the same way it works for you when you're 18 or 19. It's going to change. There's many ways to do it. And it's going to keep changing as your experiences go on. And as you do reflection, you'll be able to do what I call recall. And recall, in my, in my definition, has always been the ability to remember your reflections, experiences, moments, and challenges. And when you're able to recall that you've been through situations like this before, you've been through challenges like this before, and you're thinking about your thinking, which is called metacognition, when you begin to think about that, it does develop confidence in you to move forward and tackle new challenges. And then the last thing I want to talk about is recognition. And recognition is the skill of knowing when a new situation relates to an old situation they've been through, because sometimes it's not as easy as the COVID example we've just gone through right here. Sometimes you have to realize a situation you had when you were an athlete is what's pertaining to what's going on with you in your job and your career. Or sometimes what you did when you were, uh, how you approached a studying technique, maybe a way in which you need to help you as a parent as you're older. There's lots of connections that need to be happened but it all starts with reflection. And that's really all I have for you guys. It's a short, quick message. Uh, I want you to begin your journey of reflection today because it'll make you more confident in tackling the challenges of tomorrow. Awesome, thanks Adam. Um, now I have to ask some questions about reflection and recall and recognition because while we know that's important, I think there are probably some students out there thinking, well, how can I be intentional about that? How can I make some of those connections so that it results in something for me? I, I have to think back to my college days because just like you, when I was in college, that was a really reflective period for me. I remember I was always deep in thought. I would walk down the street with a book and not, not even really be reading the book, but just thinking of things. We had a lecture series that there's a 20,000 uh, person basketball arena there and I would go to these weekly lecture series with just crammed full of people and I pull out my journal and think about something completely unrelated to what the speaker was talking about but that's where I'd get my best ideas and I'd think about things and and start to make some connections and, and develop who I was the problem with reflection is if all we do is think then we're dreamers um, but that doesn't necessarily result in anything positive. It just means that we're thinking about stuff. What do we have to do to get from reflection uh, to that recall and recognition stage? Well, what I've discovered is reflection is a practice. It is not something you're going to be good with. What you, what you went through in college is exactly what I went through in college. And when you said in the middle of class, I started thinking about this thing, 
I can tell you, that happens to me in grad school. I'm getting my doctorate, and that still happens to me. I start thinking, oh, wouldn't this be great for my family, or wouldn't this be great right. for this or that? It's a practice, and it's something you have to say to yourself. As you begin to do it more, it's easier to do it, but you're easier. it's easier to set limits in a routine of practice. So I, I'll share this with you guys. I hardly ever, I've learned this about myself, I hardly ever reflect in the evening time. And the reason why I hardly ever reflect in the evening is because I know my brain is tired. I've made a hundred decisions throughout the day. I've set guidelines for myself on when I reflect. But what's funny was when I first started reflecting, it was always in college, it was always at night, usually watching Jay Leno or whatever I was watching during commercials, I'd start reflecting on the day. Now I can't even stay up that late. So, and plus some of our viewers may not even know who Jay Leno is at this point. So, uh, probably a bad example, but it's a practice. And the more you do it, the better you get at it. And it really does become a switch where you could go into a mode of reflection and actually sit back and think for about 30 seconds. And you could think a whole entire process or challenge out. Uh, but you got to do the practice part. Now, I, I like that you bring up that for you, this you're more reflective at certain times of the day. And that's true. Research has shown that certain people are e better able to reflect and, and do something with that reflection early in the morning versus late at night. It's interesting that very, very few people get their best ideas during the middle of the day. Most people either get it first thing in the morning or last thing at night. Um, but I'm still... so. Simply thinking about stuff is good. Like right before I fall asleep, I think about what I want to do the next day or, you know, so I have a little bit of that reflective practice, although my best ideas do come at the beginning of the day. Should we be journaling or should we be doing anything so that we don't lose those ideas? Or are you saying when we practice reflection, it's just enough to be thinking about stuff? Well, I'm, I'm saying with my journey of reflection, what I would tell you person uh, I've read that journaling works for most people. And mm -hmm. I got to be honest with you, it didn't work well for me because I would start writing paragraphs. I wouldn't just write a quick note on the side. Okay. I started writing myself paragraphs so I wouldn't forget it. And then I'm missing things. But mm -hmm. what I would say is if you are a person who reflects very well, maybe over lunch or something like that, by doing a practice of it, you're going to be able to figure out how to tailor that into your daily needs and how to tailor that into your lifestyle right now. Uh, especially if, with this COVID thing going on right now, if you're a virtual learner and you want to start reflecting in the middle of the day of how your day is going, it's all right to take a break and reflect it. The, the practice comes in the process of recall. For some people, it is journaling. And a lot of the stuff I've read, journaling is what you should be doing, according to a lot of people. And I think there's a lot of benefits to that. Uh, I just, that just wasn't for me. Uh, I do know another person, he set up a private Twitter account and just does tweets to himself and he's the only person that could see him. And I'm like, awesome. that's a great, like just a few characters of what you're thinking at the moment. And that's how he does his reflection. So there's many ways to go about doing it, but the, the journey of it will help you find the best way that suits the answer for you. That's great. Good, good suggestions. You know, we just had a, a guest on, um, Trisha Brooke was a few episodes ago, and she's a, a director in Hollywood and a choreographer. And she gave the challenge during COVID to start recording your stories, but doing it through video and creating YouTube videos. And, and, and that is a very reflective thing, right? So if you're telling your story about what you're experiencing now as a student and moving forward, uh, that's, a different way so it's not your traditional journaling like you would write on a piece of paper or type into a computer but you can actually create a video for me it's audio when I get done running so I'll go on a long run in the morning and when I get done I have all these thoughts circling through my head I'll pull out my phone and hit the voice recorder and that's where I reflect I, I just make audio notes and, and sometimes I turn those into podcasts I have a podcast called after the run and I share my reflections with a podcast audience and it's so easy for me because I don't have to be like, oh, well, I have to get my notebook or, you know, things like that. It's just pull out your phone and start talking to it. So we can all do that reflection in, in different ways. Um, tell me a little bit more about that recognition stage. You, you started getting into that, but I feel like we didn't really delve into recognition. Can you kind of recap what that is and what we should be doing? Sure. Recognition is the skill of knowing when you're in a situation to use recall. So it's basically recognition is when you need to realize that this challenge that's ahead of you 
is similar to a challenge that's been in your past or this event that's coming up is similar to something I have done in my past. And the catch, what I found with recognition is they're not always linked. It's not always school prepared me for school, you know, my career experience prepared me for my career. They're kind of all over the place. It's like you can sometimes connect. It's not as simple as A, B, C. Sometimes it's A to L and L to Z are the answers to get to that reflection. And recognition is knowing the moment in which you need to sit back and say, wait a minute, this is coming up. Have I done anything like this before? All right. Uh, it's a very simple stage in terms of uh, explaining it, but it's probably the most difficult because you're asking yourself to tie in something from that may not be as, as a uh, pathway as what you're normally expecting. Right. Well, and, and I like this idea of recognition in academia, we call that transfer, right? It's taking something, our own experience or something that we've learned and using that knowledge in a different area, transferring that knowledge to a new situation or a new experience. And the way that we do transfer best is by making as many connections as possible. And we know that people learn uh, in a lot of different ways, but you can make connections by listening to things. You can make connections by seeing things. But some do best by experiencing or by talking about things. And so when you're talking about recognition here, if, if students really want to take advantage of the things that they've done in the past so that it works in a current situation, are there any strategies? And I don't know if there's a good answer for this, but are there any good strategies on being more intentional in that recognition, making sure that they're you know, actually recognizing things and, and making notes. I mean, that's what school is, right? School is all about recognitions. We want you to learn things so that you can use it in the real world. What are your thoughts about that or ideas for your students on, on how to be more intentional about recognizing? So how to be intentional about recognizing the strategy? It's not a popular one that I share, but it's, it's, it's easy. I joke. I say, you Google it. And what I mean by that is <laughs> the internet is loaded with self-reflection exercises, including things on how to spot when to recognize or when to transfer knowledge from one area to another. I'll tell you right now, I was reading about reflections just a couple of weeks ago um, and uh, addicted to success.com had a great article on it. And that right there helped me with recognition a little more. I think the article was um, the power of self-reflection and the way it can change your life or something like that. And uh, it was really good on reflection and it actually gave techniques on um, recognition and it gave techniques on uh, opportunities and how you could do reflection, including journaling and things like that. But what I suggest to everybody is we've got this open resource called the internet and use it, use it for your journey, use it for any skill you want. That's what it's there for. And so it's not just about reflection. Uh, and you don't have to use Google, use whatever search engine you want to. But uh, uh, the more you dive into and research it, the more you'll understand it better. And uh, you will be confident moving forward with reflection as a result of doing that simple step. Awesome. Well, Adam, I love that reflection has become such an important part of your own life. When I think about the role reflection plays in society, I think we undervalue it. We, we downplay it. You know, we acknowledge that it's something worth doing, but we don't talk about it enough. And, and as I get older, I think self-reflection is what has brought me the most peace and happiness because it's where I have my big aha moments. It's where I realize this is what I need to do to be a better husband and father. This is what I can do for my students. And I'm sure you've seen that in your life as well, that as you reflect, you have more meaning in life and it, it opens things up to you. Um, do you have any final words of advice for students as, as they strive to be more intentional, reflective practitioners? The best advice I have is get started today. And do it as simple as possible. Just think about the COVID situation. And, and the more you do it, the, the, the better you get at it, the less time it actually takes to do that because you'll know what your key trigger questions are. Uh, it's a practice, so just get started on it. It's not something that could be read through a book or read through an article. It's needs something you need to do genuinely on your own. Awesome, thank you. Now, uh, if kids want to follow you or learn more about you, is there a place that we should send them? I would definitely just go to my Twitter. Uh, Twitter account's the best for me. Uh, it's at ashnug, and um, that's it. It's a simple handle. Okay. And we'll link to that in the description. Well, thanks for being with us here today on Virtual School Assembly, Adam. Thank you so much for having me, Tyler. I appreciate it.